So did you ever stop and think there's someone who runs their hands through your hair on a regular basis? You even let them put sharp instruments up there? It makes you wonder, who is this person? Why do I trust them so much? Why do I let them do this to me? Well, for over 30 years and for hundreds of people, I am that guy. So let me help you answer some of those questions. I've learned that the relationships between a barber and his client and a woman and her hairdressers are like no other. <clears throat> but first, how I landed behind this chair. It started when med school proved too tough for my father, so he bought two corner properties on Mount Rose Avenue and turned the wraparound porch into a barber shop adjoined to the house where he would reside. Now that's uh, Italian American real estate development 101 for those <laughs> not in the know. Um, Mount Rose Barbarama still stands today with seven chairs complementing the original three with an expansion in 1980 that doubled the size of the shop. His dream was to have his children, me and my twin sister, who I still work alongside, take over the family business. That's Italian real estate development 102. <clears throat> Um, he started teaching me to cut hair the summer of my junior year, and I could form an entire talk around that experience. Several talks, actually. But I had different ideas. I was going to art school. Right? Right, Carol? I mean, look at the senior high project. Well, not surprisingly, um, art school didn't go well. And uh, I found myself developing a passion for hair. And even more so for all the different walks of life that a barbershop brings in. We added women's hair care in the 80s, and Pop put a slogan on the sign, and people get mad whenever we change it, so it's still up there today. Um, the cross-section of the county we see daily has made me appreciate many viewpoints. But, of course, nobody's going to argue with me because I got the razor honed instruments, so maybe that's why we don't get into too many arguments. But I get to use my artistic talents still, um, and doing hair is fascinating. I could do it all day, and obviously I do. But... The cutting part is basic geometry. It would probably bore, bore you here. Um, what's truly rewarding is learning about people. The better you know them, the better you can make them look. And I love finding that out, uh, whether it's discussing Kendrick Lamar or talking to a World War II vet. He yelled at me for buying a Mitsubishi automobile, saying, and I quote, how dare you sponsor the corporation that made the bombs they dropped on Pearl Harbor. I've been privileged to learn about all generations, races, and genders. It has not only improved my craft, it has enriched my life. You can get a decent haircut in a lot of places. At a corner shop, at a, at a salon, at the mall. Uh, okay, not the mall. No, that was a joke. <laughs> Just don't. But any, anyways, you get a decent cut lots of places. But a great haircut is transformative. You look great because of the fresh deal, but you feel great because of the fellowship. You see there's something about someone changing your appearance during which you have a good talk. And that's a two-way street. It made me see while I'm making you look new and talking to you, how connected we are in our stories. We have places where we intersect. I still love finding this out one client at a time in 20-minute bites. When you trust someone to change your appearance, your exterior, eventually your interior, your story, your persona comes into play and our lives become intertwined in unique ways. For example, take two strapping men that might come into the shop one day. You might see two fresh cuts and a nice beard trim. The story you don't know is the one on your right screamed his head off during his first haircut. I know because I did it. I did both their haircuts uh, 30 and 28 years ago, respectively. Or take someone like Dylan. He sweats a lot, so he gets it short. Zero on the sides, one on top. It's an easy job for any barber. But it's not the cut, it's the relationship that tells me he sweats due to a medical condition. Ones that are so severe he wasn't to survive infancy, let alone ever walk. I got to see the miracle of him climbing into the barber chair this year. My side passion, music, took me to Haiti a few years ago to teach guitar in a remote village. It wasn't long before the students found out my true profession, rounded up a pair of clippers, and put me to work. If I was your doctor, your bartender, or your lawyer, you might not even know this story. But as your barber, it might come up in conversation during a haircut. Like it did with Jack, a local music teacher who asked for more information and went and taught music in the same village this past summer. These stories keep my work fresh. As a hairstylist, you must have a passion not just for hair, but for the people. Otherwise, you're just going to get burnt out. For me, connecting with a teenage drummer over music 
is as integral part of the service as putting the blue streak in her hair. Barbering isn't glamorous work. Most of us aren't famous. We're not millionaires. We work long hours. Um, we don't do anything noble like, say, save lives. But sometimes we do spare them. Wait for it. <laughs> Where my passion lies is giving you a great haircut by getting, you, getting to know you better. <clears throat> I'm going to get super pretentious, pretentious, which barbers aren't really known for, but I believe the universe is trying to tell us greater stories than we could write on our own by connecting us. It's our job to be aware of these connections. So case in point, after my father passed in 2012, I waited five years to fill his chair. I knew it couldn't be just anyone working there. I started the search and enter Marissa. She's a distant cousin tired of working for a corporate chain. It was perfect for her to fill that chair. Why was it so perfect? Because of her father, Frank. Her father, Frank, was the first client at our shop. He got his first haircut as a child by my father the night before he opened Barbarama in 1962. Barbering has made my eyes wide open to these kind of stories. It makes me wake up and love what I do still. Barbers are kind of salt of the earth. It's pretty simple. You cut hair, it gets shorter. A plus B equals C. But that's a good analogy for the conversations we have. Work through it, cut off the dead ends, and make something beautiful. I'm convinced that if we had more relationships like the ones that take place in a barbershop, we could change the world. And that's the final cut. Amen.